Hi guys, so you are seeing me now entering the Las Vegas Convention Center where I'll be going to CES and I'll be showing you all the lovely tech that's available 2019 onwards. Roll the intro. Hi guys and welcome to um, my recap of day one at CES 2019. Uh, wow, so my first day at CES um, was a little crazy. Um, I've got blisters on top of my blisters just by walking around everywhere. It was... Um, it wasn't that different from every other um, exhibition or trade show I've been to before. Um, the amount of people, yes, there was a lot of them, um, but it didn't seem really hectic. I've been at shows where it seems to be a lot more going on, but um, yeah, it was quite good. Um, there was a lot of people there obviously from the tech industry. There was a lot of people that were um, reporters, vloggers, bloggers, uh, online influencers, and um, I met a, a few, so uh, that was cool. So the holds were sectioned off um, to their own respective um, areas uh, in the actual uh, convention center. I didn't venture out to um, any of the other uh, events happening at the Venetian Sands and Park MGM. So I'll be checking those out tomorrow. Um, but what I did see was uh, Sony, Panasonic, Samsung, um, RCA, um, who else? I saw the motor. Um, the automotive side of things um, I live streamed that but because of the video quality it was just really really bad so I'm going to go back and just take some footage um, with the camera so I can actually uh, have some decent quality footage I did use my uh, DJI uh, mobile too to actually uh, help me live stream with a steady hand. It seemed to be working really, really well. But for some reason, I kept getting the end of the um, gimbal uh, in the shot. I think I was set to widescreen uh, recording. So I'm going to get that fixed. So what I've got currently that's usable footage is what I have uh, filmed on the Canon 80D. I also went to see Canon actually. I went to see Nikon. Um, I went, I didn't go to see Kodak. I saw pretty much every other company that was in and around the main halls, north and I don't know what the other side is. I guess it's south. Um, and I noticed that there was a lot of companies there that were just like market stalls. So they'd have uh, all their products and services, well, all their products mainly, and they'd be like speakers that can play music and, um, you know, give off uh, different colored lights and all this kind of weird, crazy stuff that was happening. Um, I got in uh, an interview. Um, I couldn't get an interview from anybody from Samsung. I couldn't get an interview from anyone at LG, but LG was so packed. The LG uh, booth or entrance was probably the best that I've seen so far. Um, it even beat Google's outside kiosk thing, which I don't know, don't really want to talk about that. Um, but yeah. LG were just smashing it today. They had 
the look of their uh, entrance was just amazing. It was just like curved screen from like the ceiling uh, all the way down to towards the entrance. And they were playing some funky um, videos of like stars and high resolution images of, you know, all sorts of things, nature and stuff like that. And as you go in, you're first greeted with uh, the um, 8K displays, but they're not just the ordinary 8K displays, they're folding 8K displays. So they'd have their own little box, which looks like a big massive speaker and a stand. And it would just go in slowly and then it would rise up slowly whenever you needed it. It's, it was just amazing. Their home uh, section was really good. I have fallen in love with one of their fridges and um, I've actually emailed them about something uh, because I think they've uh, got a bit of a flaw. So hopefully if they fix it, um, you know, that's on me, I guess. <laughs> uh, so the interview that I did get uh, was with Sony and it was about their um, 8K display and it was very informative actually uh, when I was speaking to the gentleman that was um, telling me about it all um, he gave me some more insights on it and like how they've been working slowly to get up to the speed of where they used to be in in the old CRT days where they were pretty much untouchable and um, since obviously the flat panels came in uh, they've been kind of playing catch up to be fair and they know that and um, yeah so they get into the stage where um, the gentleman said just you know give us a try and just have a look at the screens and yeah I was really impressed I think the stars of the um, of CES so far have been the televisions um, from all like from LG, Samsung and Sony, I think they have completely smashed it. Um, I really can't choose between the two, but sorry, between the three. <laughs> but um, my uh, instinct says go with Samsung, but it's just LG's presentation was just amazing. And the quality was just as good and um, I couldn't see any kind of issues with uh, any of it whereas with Samsung they had 8k displays and they were showing um, they were showing videos and there was actually like banding uh, as it was loading the you know as it was loading the frame but it just you know it just fell apart for me there and uh, Sony's one was wow, that was just really good. I think um, I'll put the footage on and you'll see how uh, how good it looks. Unfortunately, um, you need to actually be there to see like the quality. I was actually quite a distance away when I was filming. So um, yeah, and there were a lot of um, other companies there, as I said, um, and I didn't get to speak to any of those they were all either too busy or they didn't want to speak to anyone. Um, I kind of felt really annoyed with Canon or the person that I was speaking to at Canon, but he did let me try the, um, the new R series camera. And um, yeah, it was quite good. It was a lot more heavier than I expected. Um, I don't think I'll be replacing the ATD uh, just yet but um, yeah you'd have to but the uh, Nikon representative he was really good he uh, explained all the different formats and what have you all the different range and well sorry um, he told me about the whole range of cameras and what the you know the new Z6 and the Z7 we're all about and um, yeah I think everybody um, is you know 
jumping onto this mirrorless bandwagon and it seems to be a good thing and um, I'm hoping to actually uh, trial one of the mirrorless cameras from Samsung so I'm Samsung <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping to trial one of the cameras from um, Canon and from Nikon and uh, see how good these mirrorless cameras actually are um, Oh, my arm's killing. Oh, yeah, so my arms are killing, my back is killing, my feet are killing. Um, I've had a backpack on my back for pretty much the whole day, which had a full size mini tripod. Uh, had my jacket in there, it had my battery charger and my batteries. Um, my power bank which is like this big and um, other bits and pieces my DJI mobile too and yeah I can really feel the pain now <sighs> I think tomorrow once I've seen uh, the companies that I want to see uh, I think I'm going to uh, come back here and just um, put an edit together and push it out and then just enjoy the rest of the day. I don't think I can handle it uh, doing it all day. But I've pretty much seen most of what I wanted to see. Um, I need to go obviously to have a look at the gaming and the computer side of things. Uh, AMD, I have a keynote at uh, nine o'clock tomorrow at the Venetian. Yeah, I think it's a Venetian. Excuse me. And uh, yeah, I'll be checking that out. Um, yeah, and then hopefully I can have a look at the um, strip. Uh, well, have a look on the other side of the strip that I haven't been to yet. And um, yeah, so far so good. But for some reason, one of the things that I was getting really annoyed with was the fact that every manufacturer that I came across were trying to push um, the smart speaker, uh, whether it be Google Assistant, uh, Alexa, um, what's the other one, Bixby. And they were just pushing that as like, oh, wow, this is the new thing. You know, you can click on your... Um, Sorry, <laughs> you can just voice activate your TV to to show you what you, what you watched yesterday, and this is a point I was trying to make earlier. I don't think I made it eloquently enough, but um, if I wanted to rewatch something, I wouldn't do it the next day. I wouldn't actually do it a week later. Maybe I do it a month or at least you know a year or two later. And uh, I don't think I don't really see the the point of having a, a voice activated control uh, for your TV just to find out what you watched yesterday. But that was the example given to me by quite a few, um, you know, of the uh, people that were actually uh, demonstrating uh, the the televisions with uh, with the assistants. So, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, no, I'm not a really big fan of it. Okay, I'm a fan of like, you know, Google Home, I use that. Uh, I don't use Alexa. I don't actually have one. I was thinking of getting one, but um, yeah, uh, I don't see why I need it in the TV. I know my cousin uses it. Uh, use a voice activation I think uh, on his TV but it's basic commands the, what Samsung was saying is now that they can use um, conversational um, vo voice commands so you could say who is the director of Venom and then it will come up with like watch Venom or whatever other um, search results come up with Venom in the title 
and um, like a minute later it will tell you who the director is which is really weird like you'd think it'd be faster than that but that was a demonstration that I had from Samsung it was very noisy though so it's probably thinking okay what did the person say and then show the result it was actually quite slow um, but yeah I know voice is going to be the next big thing they're putting it in the cars they're putting it in um, TVs fridges you name it and they're putting it in there it's a good thing but you only need one device that can do it you don't need to actually have all your devices you know active uh, in doing that because I don't know I just it doesn't make sense to me I would just have one device have it central in the home or have it you know somewhere in the ceiling and uh, just talk to that and then it will then do whatever you want say Google turn the lights down 20% and it will do it to 20% you don't want oh hi fridge can you turn the cooker on why would you tell the fridge to tell, turn the cooker on anyway uh, so watch these clips and you will see what I've been up to today and um, I'm sorry that the live streams were really poor quality I even tried to go down to uh, 480p on recording but uh, AT&T is only giving me like kilobytes uh, of up and down uh, speed for um, internet and the venue isn't supplying any uh, to the visitors only to exhibitors and they are charging $79 for up to 1.5 megabytes per second how crap is that it's extortion <laughs> so um, day two is going to be a better day Day one was good, I'll be honest with you. I enjoyed it. There was a lot of uh, tech that I saw, but nothing brand new at all, to be honest with you. It's just the same thing, you know, a new iteration of it. Um, I, didn't, I didn't actually get to see the new Samsung phone. I asked around and um, nobody was saying anything. Um, I asked at the Samsung booth, I asked at the little kiosk they had outside where they were actually um, showcasing the space there for the 2019 phone. It obviously is the Galaxy S10, but we want to know what it looks like. We want to know what functions it has, and I'm surprised they didn't unveil it um, on the first day. So anyway... Um, I'm not going to be nattering on anymore. Uh, enjoy the video. Oh, before I go, please like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.
right here, this tall gentleman is Matthew Jordan Smith. He's our Nikon ambassador. We flew him in from Japan because, I mean, he's really good. He takes pictures of celebrities and he'll take your headshot and he'll show you how he quickly transfers the data using the Thunderbolt 3 connection. And then they have software optimized to leverage the cores of Intel processing. And so we've got, we're very happy that Matthew's here and he'll get you in, take your picture quickly. The second thing you want to know about is right behind me. We have our folks from the San Francisco Art Institute, led by Professor Coppola, and they're showing you the journey of taking video and editing it, starting from this space on over to the end. So the first step is they're taking a 3D image of your face and then using the AI engine the inference engine, they're able to do filters of your face or whatever it is using famous artists. And so they, they take those and then they do the video edits over the 8K video that was shot on the Vegas Strip. So then it, you take the edits, you take the video from the 3D and you put it on the 8K and it's all in real time. And the reason is we have i9 processor in there with 18 cores, it's leveraging those cores so that you are not waiting around all day to get the finished product. You can use the 8K, the 8K video, do all your edits, do all your rendering, and then tomorrow when you come back, you'll have your, your floating head in 3D as you're marching down the Vegas Strip. So these are our filmmakers, and again, the major thing is this, if you need to tell stories, you don't want your technology to be getting in the way. You want to overcome those challenges, and that's what we're showing here at Intel, is how we're creating innovations to take those who want to become creators and giving them the tools and guidance necessary to make that happen. So come on in and see us, folks. We're happy to have you here at Intel. We're showing you the partnerships that are making impossible possible, and we're here to answer the questions that you have. So here, so here is a... Uh, Without uncompressing or using proxies. So for example, if the, if the speed of this road was 25 miles per hour, we're probably not expecting there could be a car coming at 100 miles per hour. Right? And so when we're looking, we're looking, okay, is there somebody there that gives me enough time to pull out? Because maybe they're going 25, maybe they're going 35, maybe they're going 40. But at some point, we have to make a guess. You know, we have to make a, a reasonable expectation on how uh, fast potential vehicles could be driving uh, as we make that turn. So the question then becomes, then for an automated vehicle, balancing safety and utility, what assumptions can an automated vehicle make about the behavior of other human drivers on the road? Is it reasonable to expect an oncoming vehicle is going two, three times the speed limit? Or can the autonomous vehicle assume it's going only 10, 20% uh, 
over the speed limit. Michael Kisara at the Tiffin booth who oversees marketing and content here. How's it going? Man, super pumped to be here talking about some ND filters. So, uh, you have time to focus on what really counts for you. It is connected, so you can surf the internet or get some work done on the iPads. And it is electrified, that means powered by uh, an electric drive. Also, Hey, glad you asked those questions about our new Master Series TV. Uh, in particular, we're talking about the Z9G, which is our 8K television. It comes in two sizes, 85 inch and 98 inch. So here's the deal, big question, is there any 8K content out there? Uh, the answer right now is yes. So over my left shoulder, you'll see an image of uh, the UHC 8300, which is our 8K camera that Sony does provide and make. So we are on the cusp of delivering both cinema and broadcast 8K content. But the real question is, what do we do now until that happens? Well, inside of our new Master Series TV, the Z9G, we have our X1 Ultimate chip. With the X1 Ultimate chip, it has our 8K XD, excuse me, our 8K X Reality Pro processor, which works hand in hand with the Ultimate to be able to deliver unrivaled upscaling performance from 1080 all the way up to the 8K resolution. So it's not just about filling the dots or filling the spaces, it's also delivering a very clear image so that we can maximize the performance and the customer is getting all the benefits of 8K that they're looking for. So that's really what we have there on that side of it. The other thing that's super exciting about the Master Series is the audio component to it, which we haven't talked a lot about. So it's acoustic multi-audio technology. So we understand that only one part of the cinematic experience is the visual. The audio element of it is extremely important as well. So on the television, there's a series of two speakers on the top, two speakers on the bottom, and subwoofer dead center of the screen. So your audio is no longer going from floor delivering forward. You're getting all of the audio being delivered to you at a direction, at a forward direction, no different than you are in the movie theater. So we're really excited about that to be able to deliver that immersive experience on both the visual side and the audio side. Okay, so uh, how do you these K TVs uh, handle uh, like computer or PC content and uh, like YouTube streaming and stuff like that? Oh, so that's actually that plays very much in our space. So. A large part of what the X1 Ultimate chip does is handle not perfectly processed content. We understand if you take highly graded content and put it on the TV, it's going to look good automatically. But how do you handle compressed content? So we've developed over the years, with that in mind, our chip to be able to handle your Netflix, your Hulu, all of those streaming devices or all those, excuse me, those uh, streaming platforms to deliver perfection. Now, sort of a testament to that is our relationship that we have with Netflix. So as you can see, at our, if you were at our press event, we talked a lot about Lost in Space and how our Sony Sinalta cameras are being used to videotape um, a lot of their content. Well, we've made sure that we deliver a codec or an unpackaging of that compressed content 
to deliver the perf perfect, excuse me, uh, 8K image that you're looking for on your television. So we definitely take in mind what the streaming consumer is looking for. So I would love to be able to give you pricing at this point. That has not been announced yet, but since the TVs are going to be available this current year, we should be hearing pricing pretty soon. Uh, if I said uh, before December, I'm pretty sure you would get angry with me. But I would say by end of summer, we should see these in uh, a lot of living rooms in the, in, in, in the world. Um, do you know the price of the actual 8K camera? No, I actually do not. Um, I, I've heard rumors. I, it's not uh, something that I can confirm for me to be able to say that, yes, it's this amount. But um, no, I, I've, heard, I've heard some rumors, but it is a pricey piece. <laughs> Great. Well, yeah, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. <laughs> The freezer. Okay, well, I'll start with the apps. So we have, of course, Alexa. Then we have Amazon DAC. Of course, all the items that you do with Amazon, you okay. can make a DAC cord. We also have a camera. So as you're um, thinking you're at work, you can, you're going to go shop and you don't know if you need that milk or the eggs, you can then go on your app and see exactly what's in your refrigerator. Okay. You can then, it's already been preloaded with recipes. <laughs> And we already have a partnership with Side, uh, Side Chef, Drop It In It. So let's say I'm going to make this classic clown sour cheese. It tells me everything that I need. And then because you bought this, of course you bought the Smart Range. And then I can go ahead and tell it, go ahead and start preheating my oven. Okay. And then I can start cooking. And then as I'm done preparing, I can then put it in my oven right away. Okay. So let's say I'm going to make this recipe tomorrow and I realize I don't have any flour. I can then press flour, add it to my shopping list. And then I go back to my shopping list and it'll be added on there. Okay. So as I go shopping tomorrow, I know to buy the flour for my cauliflower So would that cheese. go to my like one note or something like that? Well, there's going to be an app that you download and you'll have your shopping list and then you'll be able to, okay? And then of course, it's um, to the internet so you can watch YouTube videos, anything that you do on your phone. I had a question about that. Yes. So say there's like four people in the house with their own YouTube account. And I want to watch YouTube while I'm having my breakfast and somebody else comes along. I don't want them to look at what I'm looking at or well, you're in your into my own account. Well, I would put my account, I would have my account password protected okay. so they couldn't watch it. Like, I, I have the internet at home and I have, when guests come over, they just can't come on my internet. I have my password protected. No, that's right. Yeah. But say I'm throwing something on. I finish watching it. Right. I'm still logged in. Right. On, on the uh, fridge. Right. Okay. But I don't want the next person using the fridge to be able, able to be logged into my account. So you don't want the person to use the fridge. No, no. I want them to use the fridge. Right. But, but you don't want them in your account. Exactly. Hmm. But how do you stop that? You just tell them don't be don't go near my fridge. Yeah, but <laughs> I don't work know. there a, a four-year-old kid. Oh, that's a good question. I'm going to have to get back with you on that. So listen, I'll give you my card. I'm not sure of that answer to tell you Thank the truth. You okay? Um, but that is a good one. And then I'll talk to the engineers and make sure that they can do some sort of password protection in regards to that. Parental controls too. I get what you're saying. I don't know if you've seen on the Google, um, you know when you're using the Chrome tab? Yeah. And you've got your YouTube account on your phone. Yeah. You can click, uh, you control the video that you're right. watching. Right, right. Directly on through the TV. Uh-huh. And it uh, they bro broadcasts it on the broadcast. Right. You, uh, you could have something similar to that. So right. So the next person that wants to watch it, they throw their own. Yeah. That's a good question. I'm certainly going to talk to the engineer to see okay. the answer to that. Send me an email. I'll see if I can. But I'll let them know that was a question. Okay. They need to think about that. Cool. Okay. And what about the inside of the fridge? Can oh, I sure. Think? Definitely. That's the camera right there, and it's a panorama. It's only one camera, and it takes an image of the whole. Really? Yeah, just the refrigerator. Just the refrigerator. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, thank you. Oh, welcome. And then let me. I'll show you the freezer. This is actually a new type of ice that we're going to start to see. And is this available? 